Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, and welcome to another episode here on the Life Signatures Radio. It is a daily show where we talk about purpose, productivity, and resilience. In the past uh, several episodes, we've been talking on the topic of work. We're talking about the different ways that work is exemplified, and we're continuing to do that. Today, we're going to continue doing that and see what more we can be able to learn. Of course, we've been talking about the four ways so far, and uh, we're still talking about the fourth and looking at the different sub-aspects of the same that we are going to rule through our work. When you are working, when you're doing your life's work, you are ruling. That's the kind of rulership that is needed. That's the kind of leadership that is needed. Not the leadership where someone is loading over you because of one thing or another. That's not the type of leadership that we, we need. That's why we go for democracy. It's failing. Even Greece itself is a failed state. You go for kingdoms. You go for socialism, communism. There are all those issues. But as long as a man... Or a woman is not ruling through their work, there's going to be a problem. So stay tuned. Welcome to the Life Signatures Podcast with Lawrence Namale. Lawrence is a life coach, author, and keynote speaker who loves to tackle different topics on purpose, productivity, and resilience. His mission in life is to awaken all your boundless possibilities available in you. Life Signatures Podcast is dedicated to bring to reality every single person who knows that deep down in their gut, there's got to be more to life than this. And now, here is your host, Lawrence Namale. So let us just do a recap here and learn some of the things that we've been talking about in these episodes where we've been talking about work. First of all, we've said that work is exemplified through creation. And I keep saying that. And I feel like I should keep talking about it, but I've already talked about this in the past episodes. So go back and check them out. Secondly, work is exemplified through growing and increasing. If I am not growing, if I'm not increasing, if I'm not making growth, if I'm not making increase, What am I doing? Okay? Especially if it's for a prolonged period of time. You're just stamping, stamping, stamping. There's no growth in you. There's no growth in the things that you're doing. You don't see any growth. You're going to give up. In fact, you're going to get stressed. Even if you're getting paid. In fact, you, you, you look at the pay that you're getting... In the mundane things that you're doing that are repetitive, that they, they, they lack growth and they lack increase, you, you get stressed. Mental health issues. Because there's no growth, there's no increase. Thirdly, work is exemplified through going global. Your work, even in this day and in this age, might be solving problems that are prevalent in different pockets of this world, across the world. Global doesn't mean 8 billion people at once. It means in every continent there is some people who can be helped by your work. That's how it goes global. Of course, scaling is a different thing altogether. I'm not going to go deep into that. But fourthly, we're saying that work is exemplified through ruling. It is when we are doing our life's work, we are ruling. Governments initially were not supposed to be there. Governments are there for those guys who are doing wrong. In fact, I've just been reading in the book of uh, First Peter, uh, I think chapter 2. It says we should submit to the governing authorities because God assigned those so that they can keep us in the straight and the narrow. Those ones who are doing wrong to, punish, to, to be punished and those ones who are going, doing right to be applauded. See, there is a problem. That kind of leadership is a problem where a man is leading or ruling over another man. That was not the intention. The intention was for man to rule this world through their work, through their life's work. And we say that there are very many examples of people who are doing the same. Bill Gates is a ruler. Elon Musk is a ruler. 
even against the establishment, especially when he took, took on Twitter, and there's nothing the Democrats are going to do about it. They say they're going to quit Twitter en masse, and Twitter has become one of the, it's still one of the leading uh, social media platforms. He's, he's ruling through his, his life's work. So how are you going to rule? How are you going to rule through your work? Number one, find your purpose. We talked about this. Find your purpose. And then number two, we said you need to find your territory. Find the territory. Find the niche. But today, let us talk about this. You need to execute the purpose. There are two things. You found your purpose. You found what it is. Two, you found out those ones who are going to benefit or the problems you're going to solve. You found out whom, whom, whom your villain is. We're going to talk about that tomorrow. But then you need to execute. In fact, let's just talk about that today. You, you need to execute the mandate. You need to execute the purpose. If you know that you've been called to inspire and you've been called to inspire young people, find where those young people are and start inspiring them. How are you going to execute your purpose? Number one, you need to find, build products and build services because people will only interact, listen to this, they will only interact with your purpose through products and through services. Apple is a multi-billion, actually a trillion dollar organization. But you don't interact, interact with Apple through their headquarters. We interact with Apple, not even through their branches. We interact with Apple through their products, the MacBooks, the iPhones, and the iPads, and the, the watches. That's how we interact with Apple. We don't interact with Microsoft by going to, you know, the United States in Palo Alto, in California, no? We interact with Microsoft through their products, through SharePoint, through Microsoft Word and through uh, their softwares. People are going to, you're going to execute your work through products and through services. If you're called to inspire people, then you shouldn't be in the bank clucking away. If you're in the bank clucking away, at least inspire the people in the bank. Start with where you are. I'm not saying you should quit and just go out there. Start with where you are. Let the organization know that you are the inspiration. Every morning they gather, they ask, Now, Lawrence, do you have a word for us? And you will say, Yes. I know that this, at times you look at the work that you're doing and you feel that there's no inspiration in it. But I'm, I'm here to tell you, ladies and gentlemen, I'm here to tell you that the moment you show up, you are making a statement in the spiritual arena. You're making a statement in the spiritual realms that you are alive and that you're here to do something. You're moving this world forward with your contribution. And just continue contributing. Don't give up. Don't feel like you want to give up. Put excellence in your work. And people look at you and they're like, they start clapping. I needed to hear that. I needed to hear that. And then you go back and you continue clapping. But it has been noticed in the people that there is an inspiration. There is someone who is to inspire us. There is a motivator. Next time that there is an opportunity for you to move on to another level of motivating people at the organizational level, even at the, if, it's a multi, if it's a multinational, right? At the regional level, guess whom they're going to look at? They're going to look at you. So execute your purpose. I don't care where it is. I don't care what it is that you're doing. Execute your purpose. Do not hide yourself in a job title. Oh, my title is a marketer. And yet you have a gift to do other things. Or you have your purpose, which is not necessarily marketing. In your purpose, in your job title, make sure that you're exemplifying your title. And if you're not even employed, this is, this is it. This is it. Well, you might not get pay, paid in the first year. But this is it, my friend. This is it. Execute your purpose. That's how you're going to rule. Through your work, it's by executing that particular purpose. Let it just be a season. But in due time, start inspiring people. If all you're doing is something that is not in line with your purpose, for a season, do it. Chances, that, uh, chances are that you will be the most effective leader through inspiring people than through clerking, even in that particular bank. Know what it is that is your purpose and start executing it. 
And then, of course, go a step further. Number four, and know your enemy. Know your villain. Like, what are you fighting? If you're that clerk who is an inspiration, what are you fighting? You're fighting against demotivation. You're fighting against a, a dour environment where there is, you know, people, people are just going there for the sake of going there because they want to draw a salary at the end of the month. Know what the enemy it is that you're fighting. And wake up in the morning every single day and arm yourself, sharpen yourself like Stephen R. Covey will say, sharpening the saw. Sharpen the saw against your enemy. Sharpen yourself up, spruce, spruce yourself up. Know what you're up against every waking day. That's how you're going to rule. Because part of ruling is to subdue and to have dominion. That is part of rulership. How are you going to have dominion where there is no enemy? I mean, when you do not know who your enemy is. You only conquer a known enemy. You cannot conquer an unknown enemy. So you've got to have in your crosshairs a particular enemy that you're rising up against. That's how you rule through your work, ladies and gentlemen. So those are the four ways through which we rule about our work. I need you to never lose sight of the big picture. You are a ruler through your work. Me and I, me and you are rulers through our work. And our greatest enemy is not our competitor. It's where we go wrong. The guy who has put a kiosk next to you is my competitor. No. I mean, it's your enemy. No, that's not your enemy. That's, he can even be your collaborator. Your greatest enemy is the enemy, the villain that you're fighting. If you find that your greatest enemy in life is a competitor, I'm telling you, you've really lost sight of your authority and the meaning of your work. You have lost it. Soon enough, you, 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 you get sidetracked fighting your competitor so much so that you're not adding value to the people you're supposed to be adding value to. And bef before you know it, you, you've, you've forgotten the reason as to why you're doing your work in the first place. Your enemy is the problem you're elevating or anything that stands against you and the solution that you're offering or the people you're supposed to deliver. So if you find that your greatest enemy in your, is your competitor, then you have lost sight of your authority and meaning of your work. That's the point that I'm making. So we rule, ladies and gentlemen, we rule through our work. If our work is exemplified through rulership, we rule through our work. We need to know that from the get-go. That is something that we need to be aware of. Something that we need to know is happening. If we don't have that kind of mentality, that, that, that kind of thought pattern going on in our minds that I am actually a ruler through my work, you know what's going to happen? What's going to happen is that work might, at the end of the day, become arduous and we might lose sight of what work is, really. So tomorrow we're going to continue talking about how work is exemplified in the fifth way. But today, we've concluded the fact that we rule through our work. Work is exemplified through ruling. Tomorrow, we'll look at something else. But until then, bye-bye. Thank you for listening to Life Signatures Radio. If you enjoyed today's show, subscribe to Life Signatures Radio on iTunes, Stitcher, or visit our website at lifesignatures.libsyn.com. Life Signatures Radio, fresh, clean, and inspiring.